64 qualities of Krishna in the nectar of devotion. And then it's described how other personalities of Godhead, even up to Balaram, can have even a maximum of 62 of those 64 qualities. Uh, Balaram is almost like Krishna, but he doesn't play the flute, and he doesn't have these beautiful pastimes with Radha. Right? So these are two things that are missing from Balaram that are present in Krishna. And then similarly, in the Vishnu forms in the Vaikuntha planets, uh, they have less qualities. And then the, the pastime, like the Purusha avatars in the material world, they have less qualities. Right? And then by the time you get down to Lord Brahma and the demigods, they have even less. Right? And then, of course, the ordinary jivas in the earth planet, you know, they have even less qualities. So when we try to have happy, get happiness by relationship with another jiva, they have very limited qualities. So how can we get full happiness from that? But when we worship uh, the demigods, that's better. Huh? And when we worship Lord Brahma, that's even better. And then when we worship the super soul, that because he's Vishnu, huh? He has finally, we're worshiping someone with all the qualities of the personality of Godhead. But when we worship Lord Ramachandra, that's even better because he has more qualities. And when we worship Lord Balaram, that's even better. But then finally, when we worship Krishna, that's the ultimate. Uh, he has all the transcendental qualities. And so he has, we get full enjoyment from that worship, full happiness. How is it uh, that Radha opens the path to Oh, because she is the uh, greatest servant of Krishna. Uh, she gives more pleasure than anybody else. So if we serve her, it's just like, for example, let's say you wanted to see the president. Right? I don't know why you'd want to see the president. <laughs> but let's say you wanted to see the president. I know. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to see the president, First, you have to maybe, uh, you know, write to your local congressman. And then maybe you, you meet your congressman and then, you, you know, he introduces you to the senator. And then the senator introduces you to somebody in the cabinet. And then you get an invitation to go to the White House and then maybe you can meet the president. You know, you have to go step by step. You can't just go directly to the president. It's not, if you stand and go knock on the White House gate, hey, I want to see the president. You know, get lost. You have to go through some connections higher and higher and higher. So that's what you start with your guru, and then you, you also develop a relationship with the previous gurus in the parampara, huh? going all the way back to Lord Brahma, and then higher and higher in the spiritual world. And you finally... You develop a relationship with Radharani, and that's how you meet Krishna. Now somebody's going to ask, how do you develop your relationship with Radharani? Right? You already know? Yeah. How? Well, no, it's through Lord Chaitanya. Because Lord Chaitanya is in the mood of Radharani. See? And Gadadhar is directly Radharani herself. This is very confidential. Rad Gadadhar is Radharani's mood, the incarnation of Radharani's mood. And he's actually teaching Lord Chaitanya how to be like Radharani. There's pastimes where Lord Chaitanya is, is, is in a particular mood, relishing a particular mood of, of uh, Radharani. And Gadadhar will be, will be saying, no, it's not exactly like that. It's like this. And then he would demonstrate. <laughs> so by creating or cultivating relationships with Lord Chaitanya and the Panchatattva, we approach Radharani. Radharani is very difficult to approach 
She's not even mentioned by name in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's only because of Lord Chaitanya's mercy that we know anything about Radharani at all. So we have to approach Radharani through Lord Chaitanya by serving Nitai Goranga. Uh, they, can, they can get us in. <laughs> Otherwise, we, we have no access. These are such confidential pastimes. I mean, when Krishna was present on the planet, even his own family members didn't really know anything about his relationship with Radharani. It was so confidential. Why? Because there was no need for them to know. They had their own relationship in a different mood. So the pastimes of Krishna are like compartmentalized. Huh? Like the people who are in the mood of uh, Dvorka, where Krishna is a great king, they're, they're very formal. Uh, their mood is more like, you know, like kings and courtiers and people like that. Politics, you know, they're kshatriyas, they're, they're, they're like that. But the people in, in Vrindavan, in Braja, are very informal uh, because that's where they're cowherd people. They're very very easy going, laid back, like the people in the village here, you know. So um, they have a different mood and they have a different relationship with Krishna. So there's no need for these other devotees to know anything about that, and they don't. What's that? Female personalities like Radha and Tulsi are so important and indispensable to worship Krishna. Hmm. Is the female expression of love more pure than the masculine expression of love? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you explained it very well the other day. Oh, I did? Yes. Okay. Remember, we were talking about that. Move the camera. I'm going to put him on the spot. <laughs> you were saying that in the material world, the female nature is very difficult. Oh, and then oh, in the spiritual oh, world, no. <laughs> why? That's the truth. Yeah. Come on, explain it. Okay, so we were talking uh, just when, when I just arrived about uh, female nature and male nature. Uh, as we know, uh, in between us, uh, we are male. There's no ma much problems. <laughs> Everything is very simple, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, you wash the dishes? No, you wash them, or whatever. But if there would be more female in this house, for example, we'd have more like, maybe, oh, you offended me. And, uh, like your house. Like my house, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's tricky stuff on the back. So it, it, that's because uh, female nature is much more complex, and uh, in the material world, this is makes makes a lot of problems normally, more problematic than uh, enjoyable. Uh, but in the spiritual world, it's it's the contrary, because it's so changing, so variegated. Krishna enjoys that much more than just simple. You get bored with. <laughs> so, so well, a good example is that Krishna enjoys his illicit affairs with the gopis more than his married pastimes with the queens of Dwarka. Uh -huh. huh? Why is Krishna dancing with other men's wives in the forest? Huh? It's more enjoyable. And it's much more complex. Obviously. Very complex, yeah. Yeah, it makes it very entangled and, uh, you know, <laughs> difficult. Uh -huh. And then, you know, they have to get up early in the morning and sneak back in the house before anybody uh -huh. finds out they're gone. And, you know, it's, it's it very difficult. It intelligence to solve. Yeah. But in this world, nobody has that, so it's always a problem. <laughs> well, yeah, we're not Krishna. <laughs> Krishna likes a challenge. You know, Krishna, you can imagine, Krishna must get bored, you know, like with the ordinary worship that goes by a formula, you know, they're chanting the same prayer every day, every day. Krishna must be like, don't you know any other prayers? 
Can't you, couldn't you make up a prayer? What's wrong with you? You know? And we find when we get into the higher levels of devotional service that it becomes much more spontaneous. The spontaneity of the expression is part of the quality of pure devotional service. So, uh, just like uh, the higher levels of Raganuga Bhakti is known as spontaneous love. Spontaneous means <laughs> you're not reading out of a book. Oh, my dear Krishna, you are the Lord. You know, No, it's spontaneous. You just love Krishna because of his lovable qualities. And you express that in a natural way. And that's spontaneous love. Huh? So, uh, when this spontaneous love is expressed,